Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. Today's show, Heidi's giggling. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> okay. Today's show is all about ornaments. Is there something in my teeth? Is it... I just noticed that she's using some of my ribbon and she didn't tell me. Oops! It's for ornaments. It's because I needed it for my ornaments today. What are you making? I have a great uh, ornament. It's a bird ornament. It's made out of aluminum foil and the old uh, Mama Aline's forge foil technique. I need to tell you, I have had a sneak peek of this. This is fabulous. It, it was one of those things that just happened and it was like this fun yeah <laughs> duh duh it was great and candace jodrowitz is creating a photo ornament you know it's so perfect this time of year to celebrate the holidays to remember the holidays with special photographs i think so too what did you make <laughs> I'm using Heidi's <laughs> ribbon to create felt ornaments. I needed hangers, Heidi. <laughs> so I am digging into Heidi's felt stash and Heidi's <laughs> ribbon and using my Aline's peel and stick sheets and my Aline's peel and stick tape and my tacky dots. And I am creating these floral, they're um, contemporary I really love floral them. ornaments. And I'm so glad that I can be your local craft shop. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back. Ornaments. You have to have them, <laughs> don't you think? You do, and bless my dear sister because she has been the keeper of all of my ornaments <laughs> over the years. I have. When we when we go to Christmas this year, start decorating the tree in the next week or so, boy, are you going to be surprised what I have. So do you have the ornaments that were given to mom each year by one of her salesmen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they were given to me, and now they're in But is But isn't possession camp. like... Nine tenths I, of the law or ten no, tenths of the law? No, 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 no. Never heard of that. I always loved those. And I didn't see why she got them and not me. And now I have possession she of got them. She got them in the end. Do you use them? I, I haven't. But I haven't okay. done much Christmas tree in more of the recent years. All right. So it would be fun to see what we decided Christmas tree. Is that a I know. <laughs> it, took, it took me a moment to go, okay, I think we'll make it a word. We'll make it a word. What's nice about those is they are collectibles but they're store-bought and mm -hmm. it's so much better to create your own ornaments yes um and you know creating the color scheme it's so funny because tiffany always does the same color scheme she buys the same colors i'm sure that what I you're do? making today i have ornaments glass ornaments to match so this would be perfect for yours gosh yes. i didn't even think about that mm -hmm. she well, does i have my colors we, well we don't <laughs> usually do traditional red uh, mm -hmm. red and green and gold um, although I do have, I do have those, but um, I don't think it's always, you know, it's not always for us. It's not always um, us to do traditional. Mm -hmm. But I know that there's people all over that uh, love the red, green, and, um, and well, gold. Well, anything that we're showing today, you can do in traditional oh, totally. colors, but we just mm -hmm. like to show them in, mm -hmm. in different colors. So, we have shown before the forge foil, which is, it's an old Mama Aline technique. It's where you put the aluminum foil onto boxes or... Um, cardboard and whatever and and you antique it with black and then you get the look of actually where the metal has been where it's been forged. It's really it's a timeless technique. Mm -hmm. So I went from there and I took and I made this really cool ornament bird but oh you just have to see what I did because it really was a surprise even to me when I was working on it. For this project, I'm using the Aline's Original Techie Glue in the gold bottle. I found that it's, it is an all-purpose glue, but it really works well for having the foil a little bit sturdier. And that's what I'm using. I'm using aluminum foil. It's just regular kitchen aluminum foil. So I measure a sheet, probably the width of the foil by this, the same width of um, like a square. And what you're going to do is you're going to crinkle it all up. And then you open it up like this. Now I just take a rolling pin. You could also take a um, 
a bottle, a jar, anything just to flatten it out. Next I want to color it. I want to put a little bit of a black acrylic paint on so that it um, antiques it. It just tones it down. I have a little bit of water here. I have a cosmetic sponge with a little bit of black paint. I'm going to put a little bit of water because I want it to be watered down a little bit. I'm just going to brush that or take the sponge and just put it over the whole surface. And you can see how it changes the color. It tones it down completely. That makes it a little bit more antique or like metal, used metal. Next I'm using the alcohol inks and I just drip them around. And if you have too much, again, you can just kind of go through it. But usually they just spread out. And this is what you'll have when you're done. One whole side is all covered. Okay, we're going to turn it over, and I have a, an old Christmas ornament and a wooden ball, and this one happens to be a flat wooden ball. I've glued it to the top. I took off the, the cap to the, um, the ornament. I've glued it to the top, and I let it dry, and you can use any size. Here's another one. Put that there for a second, because now we need to put the glue on here. I use a cardboard squeegee, squeegee it so it's even across the whole piece of the back side of that foil that you we just colored. Head's going to go in the middle. And just start working with it. Work around the head first. out here because this is going to be the tail. You can see the wings are here. And here's another wing starting here. Keep working with it. Go to the back of it, the bottom of it. You want as much up into the wings as you can get. And then I just start to shape them up against the body. Now, if there's no glue in here, then we're going to put a little bit, and that'll help them to stay up. And don't worry about any of the seams, because I'll show you what we're going to do with that in just a second. Mm 
and just keep working with it. Now this is the great thing about the Aleem's Techie Glue, the original Aleem's Techie Glue in the gold bottle. When these dry, they seem like they're a little bit flexible right now. When they dry, it, it is so much stronger. It's so cool. It's like magic that it gets strong and firm for your wings. Okay, we're going to set that aside to dry. We want that, the wings to dry up like that. And you can, you can see now the form. Make sure that you do have more pieces, all your underneath pieces, pushed in as much as you can. And here's one that's already dry that I've shaped and I've got everything glued. Now here's where any of these seams, this is where the fun comes in because you can take just some scrapbooking paper and I have some pieces here that have like a double side and I found one thing that it's, I love the, the print on this side but it's very, very thick so I try and remove part of that back layer because I want it to be a little bit thinner so that it'll It'll go around the edges. So try and remove, if you have one that's, that's that double thickness, try and get that off. It's really cool when you're scrapbooking, but when you go to use it for like collage, not as cool. Take your squeegee again, put glue on the back of the paper, and then this is where it helps to connect the different, like the wing, to the body. Over here, you can see where it didn't quite glue, so I'm going to put another little piece here. And then you just put pieces where you want them. You know, right here I need a piece, back here. And here's my bird completely done. Now, I found that it was, for me, it was a little bit too flat, so I decided to put some wire and beads. So I just uh, took some decorative wire and added some beads, wrapped it around. And then for my nest, I shredded some of the the paper, and this is the paper, this, this um, scrapbooking paper, I shredded some of the foil and I glued it on top of a clothespin so that it can go right on the tree. And then I have some little half beads that make perfect eyeballs. And then the, um, the beak, the coolest part of all, when I use my um, sponges and they, they have the um, acrylic paint on them, I usually am not very good about drying them off. So when they dry, they get really hard. So I just chopped off the bottom part of this into a cone shape, and then I just put a little bit of silver. So the beak is just part of the facial sponge. And that's all there is to it to make your eco-friendly forged foil bird. So the biggest surprise to me was how you actually used the foil for the wings and the tail. That was and a that surprise. Was, that to was me. just that was just the big aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh, it was. I had no idea. I, it's funny too because I started out with a flat bird, and you know we've talked about before how many times we we have to go through process to get what we actually want. Oh my gosh! As designers, a lot of people don't realize how many steps you go through to get this. <laughs> Uh, it, it started out flat. Mm -hmm. It started out flat. I, I actually still have that in my, you know what, we're going to put that in the almost daily. Oh, okay. okay. We'll, we'll show what the first creative thought was <laughs> yeah. of Heidi's. And then I thought, no, that's just not, it's not me, it's just flat. So then I thought, well, what can I do with the, you know, the roundness and everything? And actually when I was forming it is where I'm like, huh, oh, oh, this is so cool. And I, I came running out to Tiffany after I was gone and she's just like, oh my God, it's just so cool. And it wasn't actually until I saw your demo when I went, oh yeah. my gosh, 
this I thought this was cool, but this is really, really <laughs> cool. So. It just was the neatest thing that just it just happened. It's just one of those things that happened. Well, it's so funny when I watched Heidi's demo and I first saw her folding the foil in half, and I thought it, it looks like an angel. Oh. And not even and so you're gonna have to try that, but yeah. not even realizing. Oh yeah, she has to use all of that excess foil. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I can go on and on raving about that. <laughs> it was uh, fun. It was that I love that project. That was a brilliant Eco Heidi design. Thank you. Yeah, it did recycle too. Yes, we forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can use the mache balls mm -hmm. if you don't have mm -hmm. a, an ornament that right. you want to recycle. Right, but yeah, I'm, everybody has. Mm -hmm. In fact, garage sales. They, there's As I say, of... if you say everybody has them, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you could find one in my craft shop. I here. think so. I think so. <laughs> Heidi's personal craft shop. I think so. <laughs> Our creative friend Candice Jedrowitz is going to show you how to create photo ornaments and this is a perfect way to decorate the tree and uh, share those special moments. Because we all have photos at Christmas. Hi, Hi Candace. Candace. Why thank you ladies. Hi everyone. Welcome back to my studio. If you've ever been to my house during the holidays you know that all of my ornaments are photos. The tree is covered with them. We started this tradition about 15 years ago when times were lean and that was my gift to my husband. Family photos that could hang on the tree. He loved it. So we've done it every year since. We take pictures that um, document things that have happened in this year and then we put them on the tree. So we even started the phrase, oh that's going to make it on the tree. <laughs> Sit back and relax. This is a fun one. To start your photo ornament, you will need a photo, of course. This is my big brother at the age of one. You will need Aline's Tacky Sticker Sheets. This is a photo ornament's best friend because it's a dry adhesive. If you've ever tried to glue photos with wet glue, you know that they can be distorted or even damaged. So you don't want to do that. I have picked out three different colors that I'm going to layer and this is my inspiration for it. I loved the squares at angles like that and the round piece in the center. So my ornament is going to be layered like this and then it will have the photo and then it will have a ring made from this contrasting color. And this is my backing. Now the two squares are three inches by three inches. So this backing is four inches by four inches because when I'm done gluing all of these together I'll cut off the backing. Or if I like it I might keep it. Who knows? I've also cut out three by three inch tacky sticker sheets for each of these and of course they go on the wrong side. Get it as close as you can. And this piece will go on the background. Well, might as well go like that. All right, and then the second one goes on top of that. Before you commit, make sure that you can see that it's as even as you can get it. Pretty close. To make the circular frame for the photo, I cut a piece of two and a half by three and a half inch contrasting color. And I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch on one side and a quarter of an inch on the other side. 
The reason I, that I'm doing that is I know that when I put this in here to cut it, that the most border I can get on the bottom is a quarter of an inch. So my whole piece is going to end up two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And that's why I have cut a two and a quarter inch piece of the sticker sheet. And let's see, I think I want this end to end up being part of the border. And the other end will just kind of be a handle. Now, with the sticker sheet in place, you'll line up your quarter inch marks. I can see them both. Save this for later. You never know when you'll need a lovely accent like that. And then, I'm going to cut a quarter inch all the way around. Frame the photo the way you want it. And then, you have another piece to add to the back. So let's trim off. as close to the edge as I can get. Now I'm going to put this piece on the back. This does not have to go on perfectly because of course it's going to be cut again. Center it the best you can. And now for the magic. I have a clear glitter that has little specks of purple and green in it, so it's going to look really awesome on this. And you'll just want to go right along the edges. When the glue is dry, it'll be nice and flat. And any uneven edges that I've made with the glue can be trimmed straight. And the very last thing will be to make a hanger for it. The glitter glue is dried and I've put a hole in the top. And this is how I'm gonna hang it. I've knotted this string and I'm gonna push it through the front to the back. Go ahead, little string. There we go. And I'm going to put the back through the front and pull it tight. I like to leave a nice big loop. I can always tie it off if it's way too big for a tree branch. Another way to hang it would be this way. I put the holes on the sides and then beaded a, an 18 gauge wire through it and that's a, that's a really cool way to do it too. Tiffany and Heidi, I must tell you, you and Sister Candace are on my Christmas tree. You are one of my ornaments that I cherish. I hope that you're inspired to try something like this and I hope that if you do, you'll take nice pictures and send them to me. Email me at Candace at CoolToCraft.com and I'll share them on the website. Stay crafty, my friends. Back to you, ladies. So there you go. Super easy, super cool, and we all have to make one.
or two or three. Yeah, it depends how many photos you have. <laughs> <laughs> I was just out in the archive earlier today and I didn't realize how many containers out there had photos. Oh, cool. Yeah. We can make some vintage, vintage, yeah. vintage Aline's There's ornaments. A lot of photos. Oh, cool. We'll have to remember that. So your project today. Well, my project was inspired by cleaning out Heidi's felt box. It was like, Heidi, do you have any felt? Uh, yeah, duh. So she brings me out this box and it's, I just laugh at myself when I do this. I have to organize it first. I can't just dig through. <laughs> it, Heidi loves to dig through, but I looked at it and went, I can't make heads or tails of this. So everything I got, my little stacks out with my colors and there's a whole bunch of these little square pieces. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what those were I do. For? They actually came in a kit, in a kit form that I had when I had my store in Cambria. Um, my mosaic studio, I had bought a bunch of kits that um, were actually scrapbooking kits and they had beads in them and everything and they never sold so they ended up in my studio and I kept going through them and going through them and picking out and I thought oh finally I took them all apart put the felt where it belonged, put the paper where it belonged in the beads I did actually do some organizing before you got to it. And then I color coordinated and the, the, everything. And the colors in there were absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And as mm -hmm. you mentioned, they're my colors. So I want to show you how you can just take scraps of felt and turn them into ornaments. For my felt ornaments, I am using my Aline's Dry Adhesives. You can use the peel and stick sheets, the peel and stick tape, and the Aline's Tacky Dots on this project. The first thing that you want to do is to select the colors for your ornaments. And as I mentioned, I found this beautiful collection of colors in Heidi's felt stash and I knew that I wanted to create my ornaments from these leftover scraps. What I suggest when you are cutting your pieces for your ornaments is start with the smallest circle first. Just lay that over the next color, cut around, keep going and building that up. You can put as many layers together as you would like. You just want two layers for the back piece. Now I am making a little lavender pouch out of my base piece so I have two colors that are the same. And what you want to do, you'll notice that I did not cut them exactly right now because that's not important at this step. I need to apply my Aline's peel and stick tape so that I can join these together. So I'm going to also keep any of the excess scraps that I cut off because I can use those in this project. Just be sure that you leave them on your table face up because they're very, very sticky. And so you need to leave them face up or be sure that you put them on some sort of non-stick sheet. Okay, so I have my Aline's Peel and Stick tape down and you want to be sure and press that firmly into your felt. The next thing you want to do is decide how that other piece is going to lay on the top. And I can tell that I want this to be the top, so I'm going to leave that paper in place. To join these, I'm only going to take off the three pieces. And remember that you have to fuse your glue into the felt first in order for that paper to release. Press those together. So this is open in the top right now. Then I want to cut these so that they're even. If I stay just within the glue line, that glue won't stick to my scissors. 
So you'll notice I'm cutting just a little bit off the top piece of felt and then that keeps that glue away from sticking to my scissors. Now I'm going to take my scrap pieces left over from other projects of my Lean's Peel and Stick sheets or the tape that I have just cut and use that to join each of my layers together. So you can see it doesn't take much. The Fabric Fusion tape is really, really sticky. It's designed to be washable. Now on this project I would not wash these ornaments, but if you want to hem a pair of pants or a skirt, put appliques on, this tape is fabulous, as is the, the sheets that I'm using. For anything that you want that is washable. So glue those layers together. And I can see for this last piece, I need to cut my sheet just a little bit smaller. Okay, cool. So my flowers together. The next thing that you want to think about is creating your leaves. And I'm going to go back to our scraps here. The first thing I like to do on my leaves is to apply the peel and stick sheets to the back of the top color that I want for my felt leaf and then just cut that to shape and press that on to another piece of felt. You'll notice that if I don't press that paper and that fabric fusion on well enough when you start to peel it off, it actually pulls that felt back. So take your time with that step. I cut my second layer of felt just a little bit bigger. I like that adds one more layer of dimension. I like that look. My leaves are done. So I have some leftover Aline's Tacky Dot Singles and I'm going to use those. What's cool about these is they come in different sizes. This is the large, but if it's too large for what I, the space that I'm working on, you can actually just fold them in half and fold them down to another size. So that's really cool about these is that you can downsize them if you need to. And I'm going to find the top here and just tuck these in. Just stuck my finger into one of the dots. That happens. Be careful. <laughs> Just peel it off and I'll get another. And I think I want to put my other leaf right there. So the last step in this I want to make sure that that tape is completely down. 
The last couple of steps. First of all, I'm going to add my lavender. Just tuck a little bit down inside there. And I think we need a little bit more. Make sure that that lavender does not come up above the glue line because you want to make sure that that glue holds securely. Cut a piece of ribbon for your hanger and just um, fold it kind of in half and have that ready. Now I can take off the paper, line up my hanger, press that in place, and press it all together. And there you have a very cute, quick and easy, no-sew, felt floral ornament. So when I was creating my ornaments, Heidi said, oh, those look like little pouches. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, they are pouches for me because I like to put the lavender in, mm -hmm. but you had uh, lots of other ideas. Well, because I have so many grandkids, I'm always looking for a different way to give money. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and I, I never really like to do the cards because if I put the cards on the tree, all the kids just go right to the tree and look for their name and their cards. <laughs> and it's like, open their cards up because I'm, I'm giving them gift cards or I'm giving them money because they're, there's, you know, first of all, there's so many of them now, you don't know their individual taste. So I thought, oh, I would like to give money in a different way. I always pack money in a different way. I mean, I, I, we even need to, to share this on Almost Dailies because I will wrap, like I have one um, grandson that just loves soda. And so I would take like a, a 12 pack of soda, unwrap it, wrap all the money around the soda cans, then wrap the, um, the, the box itself, put it in a big box, wrap it, put it in another box. I mean, just as much as I can to make it a different way to give to give money because usually that's what I do. But this would be fun because you could hide them on the trees and they, <laughs> they'd probably come in and go, oh, Grandma doesn't have money for it. <laughs> we <laughs> or, a gift, them. or a gift card would be perfect. Right, a gift card or just, uh, so leave them more as a pouch mm -hmm. rather than closing them the mm -hmm. way that I did. But so. I, do, I do love them. And you know what else I love is that they were so quick to put together with the um, peel and stick sheets of... Mm -hmm. Fabulous that they are so quick to put and, together. And a nice way to use the little leftover pieces of those peel and stick sheets. I never throw any mm -hmm. of my peel and stick sheets away mm -hmm. when I cut and have extra because then you can layer pieces like this. And again, remember that you know Tiffany loves these colors for Christmas and red red green Doesn't would be every just as pretty. One? <laughs> <laughs> I think they would be really cool in, in like red and lime green and mm -hmm. and like a holiday green. Um, but again, some people don't use that lime green even in Christmas. Right. But I love the colors. Everything goes. So. What a fun show with yes. ornaments today. Yes. I love every, I love how different that we all think in mm -hmm. our designing and creativity. I think it's really cool. Let's let everyone know what we showed on today's show. Okay, today I came up with a fabulous technique with the aluminum foil that was a surprise to me. I made a bird. Oh, ornament and I love how also that it was on a clothespin so you can just clip it onto a branch and um, it works really cool so uh, um, yeah there it is and I was just thinking about the, the weight of it it's it's not too too heavy but that one is actually a paper mache ornament oh, okay and my samples that I'm making which are lighter okay. the, the paper mache ornament it tends to be a little bit heavier I was gonna say mm -hmm. that felt heavier mm -hmm. but you're right but that I did make, make my sense. samples with um, because I, I really didn't, I really didn't think about it when I went to the store. I, I just bought paper mache ornaments. <laughs> I probably already had them in there, but <laughs> Tiffany hasn't arranged my, my paper mache box or anything. So then I realized underneath the shelf I had ornaments that were a little bit discolored, and so then I went and, and did my sample with it. But but you can make these large or small, and that's what I love about isn't it. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could even use a styrofoam ball with it if you wanted to do there a great big one. That would be so yeah. much fun. Okay, yeah. I think I know what I'm going to create. <laughs> Candace Jedrowitz created photo ornaments. It's a great way to remember Christmas's past, special occasions, any way that you want to decorate your tree 
with some great photo ornaments. Even all those ones where your kids go to Santa Claus, those are fun to come in the <laughs> Like where Heidi's screaming when she's a little girl. <laughs> yeah. ah, well, I I guess, almost all my kids, kids did at one yeah. point too. But they're the fun ones. They're the ones that just <laughs> have so many memories in them. Mm -hmm. Love your project. Thank you. I dug into Heidi's felt stash and I created these contemporary floral ornaments with felt and the Aline's peel and stick sheets, the Aline's peel and stick tape, and also the Aline's tacky dots. Love it. So fast and fun with just leftovers of felt with Heidi's leftovers of felt. Well, what I wish you would have done is I wish you would have gone and ironed all that felt that was wrinkled because I'd shoved it into the uh, Well, the that'll box. be the next time. <laughs> I know. I Actually, some of the pieces that I grabbed were a little wrinkled, but I was able to just by the design that I did. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, don't have to iron these. <laughs> we would like to invite all of you to visit us at Facebook. That's facebook.com slash cool to craft and click on like to like us and become a part of our Facebook community. And not only that, but go to cooltocraft.com and be sure to sign up for our newsletter. It comes out twice a week and be sure to sign up for Almost Daily. There are two different things and they have um, lots of different information and the, the Almost Dailies uh, gives a little sneak of, of different things that we do that don't work, don't work in the other newsletters. And a lot of our bloopers go on there. And we also dig into Mama Aline archives. And mm -hmm. I'm sure we can find some really interesting felt. I thought she was going to say, and we also dig into Heidi's stash of crafts. <laughs> <laughs> we could. Right, right. We should get a picture of you going into the, uh, into the, um, long hallway there <laughs> yeah get a picture of me going in because i'll never make it back out that's heidi's craft hall uh which is filled I think it's, with amazing I think it's got of those um store all boxes i think i counted a hundred there's a hundred back in that aisle just of this is just one little aisle in her studio <laughs> but it's filled Behind with the it, it's it, yes it's filled with um all sorts of treasures that i'd love to go in and organize <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's still enough time for everybody to stop by shopcooltocraft.com if you're looking so. for a last minute handmade gift if you don't have time stop by shopcooltocraft.com and we have put some of our handmaids there for sale and 100% of the net proceeds go to benefitdonorschoose.org so a great organization that um, gets um, craft and art supplies to the schools and uh, we really need that because the schools obviously have all their funding for creative things cut and so anytime we can help out a teacher here and there um, it just makes my heart sing. So we hope that we have inspired you to grab your craft supplies and create some new ornaments this holiday either for yourself you can put that in a little bit now, <laughs> either for yourself or to give as a gift. Get creative. Get inspired. Be, Be cool. cool. <laughs>